Right, got to do a sidewards um, recording today because the sun's directly behind me. Ah, so having come out of the churchyard making that video, uh, having my meditation and reading uh, for about an hour, an hour and 15 minutes, now I'm going to the gym. And um, walking past um, one of these houses, uh, there was uh, an elderly chap doing a little bit of um, maintenance work on the pointing and stuff. And then what turned out to be his son, who was about 30 years old, was standing next to him, uh, with an elderly woman, which it could have been the wife of the guy, but looked at least 10 years younger, so I didn't know. Um, and then they were saying, like, uh, you got to find it, you got to find it, oh yeah, you got to find it. And I said, find what? Find what? And then the son turned around to me and says, cold. I said, it's everywhere. And they're looking at me. I said, look, the sky's gold. Look at those leaves over there on those trees. That's gold. Breathe out. That's gold. What about your health? You look healthy. That's gold. And he's going, <laughs> and um, the woman was the same, you know, dismissing um, uh, this level of engagement from a stranger. You know, you see, you, you can really shock people with the profundity of what you say because they don't expect it. And, um, you know, probably now they'll be thinking like, well, actually, what he was saying was quite, you know, uh, correct. There's a lot in it. Um, but um, when I was speaking about, well, this is gold, that's gold, everything's gold, your health is gold. Um, the old man turned round, who's pointing the wall, and he said, every morning I'll get out of bed, it's gold for me. And I went, there you go, that's wisdom, people. And it comes with age. And I said, unfortunately, to the son, I said, you ain't got it yet, have you? You know, you, 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 you're only halfway there. And he says, I'm full of wisdom, I am. I get it all from him. And I'm like, well, you shouldn't have been dismissing what I was saying then. But you see, being a 30 or 35 year old person, uh, lusting after gold, and thinking that it, all their problems would be solved if only they had gold. And um, they're scratching and, and striving for gold all their lives. Uh, meanwhile, their life is passing them by. Their health probably is getting worse and worse. And then, one day, all of a sudden, after your fucking uh, retirement, uh, 65 or 70 years old, uh, you think, well, I've not actually got much gold. In actual fact, I've never even seen any gold, except the wedding band on my hand. And all my years I've been striving for gold. And then they look down at their belly, and it's big and fat, and their arses is saggy, and everything's saggy on them, and they can barely walk, and they can't play sport, they can't do fucking nothing to enjoy their retirement. They have these fantasies that, oh, when we retire, pet, we can do this, and we can do that, and we can go, you know, and have lots of holidays and everything, but all they can fucking do, barely even walk, uh, down these long fucking um, uh, conveyor belt things they have in the, in the, in the uh, airports. Um, they'd have to stand on them because they couldn't even walk down them. Um, you know, how many people do you see that actually have kept their weight down and um, have actually been to the gym and um, kept themselves in shape so they can do a bit of skiing, maybe a bit of snorkeling or scuba diving or whatever. I mean, I'm, I'm 61 in, in less than a month and, um, you know, I can still do everything uh, that I did as a younger person. Fucking climbing mountains and uh, scuba diving and... Um, you know, I, obviously I'm working out and I'm cycling all the time and lots of walking. Uh, the only thing I can't do and haven't been able to do for uh, about five years now is run. Because run, running, um, I had an issue with my back and it used to jolt my back and, uh, you know, made that inflamed. But now my back's, you know, pretty fucking sound and so I probably, even if I wanted to, I could start running. But if I try, it's kind of like, well... At 61 years old, there's no spring in the step anymore. 
when I was younger, I used to fly. I, I never used to run, I used to fucking fly. You know, super, super fit. Uh, but now it's kind of like, you know, oh my goodness, you know. But, um, and of course I'm a lot heavier now. Uh, when I was, um, say like uh, 30 years old, I weighed 70 kilos. And when I was fighting uh, full contact karate, I would enter into the lightweight. Now I weigh 92 kilos. Um, of course, I've got a lot more muscle mass, and um, I suppose I've got you know a higher body index um, than, than I had before. And to be fair, you know there's about an inch uh, on my stomach this month in time, um, and I'm going to be getting rid of that over the winter time. Uh, and so. Um, you know, it's about self-preservation. And if people are going to be striving for the fiction of gold, the fantasy of gold, oh, when I've got all this gold, all my problems are solved. I won't ever have to work again. I'll be happy. Uh, will I be healthy? Well, not if I've sat like a fucking twat at the desk for 40 years of my fucking life. Or sat on a fucking tube or in a fucking train or something. No, you won't. You're going to be a fat cunt. And you're not going to be able to experience the gold which is all around you. And you won't have any gold within you because your fitness and health would have gone to pot. You see, the gold, people, is youth. That's what gold is. Gold is the vibrancy of life. And this is why, when I woke the fuck up, 14 years ago, 15 years ago now, 15 years ago, um, I said that I'm not doing it anymore. I'm not chasing this, this fucking paper uh, for the rest of my life, thinking that, you know, that's going to be the answer to all my problems and um, all my fantasies. You know, don't get me wrong, I spend the vast majority of my money on world travel. And so I did actually make love um, with uh, hundreds of beautiful women and I experienced uh, the world, um, you know, all different sorts of crazy, amazing, fantastic places. And uh, that, um, you know, money afforded me uh, freedom. So even when I was working, I went on so many holidays, so much world travel, uh, that... Um, you know, it was very, very beneficial. But all the time, I was very, very conscious that the mind and body is my treasure. And money is just a fucking... Uh, it's just a byproduct of expending my energy. And so, sure, I had massive amounts of energy as a younger person. And so I would spend it on, on physical labour, mostly. And uh, I earned a lot of money uh, because I used my mind as well as my physical body. But I was always, I always wanted to do physical labour. And so that's why I worked in the construction for many years. But then when I started, um, you know, setting up my own business at the end, I became much more sedentary because I wasn't actually doing the physical work. But I was doing a lot of work in the gym. So I'd uh, compensate like that. But um, to realise that this vessel and a pure mind is the only goal that you're ever going to want. And for those of you that think like, oh, well, I'm struggling here and I'm struggling there and I've not got this big house like these other people, you know, over the road from me, this and the other, look at their bodies. Look at their lives. Up in the morning, out at the fucking crack of dawn. Don't come back till it's fucking dark. You know, what quality of life have they got? You may think that it all looks like roses, but... I'm telling you now, if you was on fucking welfare and you was just walking in the natural environment every day, then you would have um, all the gold you will ever need. And you'll be increasing your longevity. And when you get to their age, they'll be fucked. And you will still be uh, young and sprightly in mind and in body. 
And so then you will be the fucking envy because they'll be looking from their window in their wheelchair or fucking housebound due to their obesity, looking at you running down the road, um, sprinting and, you know, maybe they can see into your house and you're pumping weights in the house and stuff. Yes, because you've capitalised on what really is gold. What really is gold, people. And so, when I look at people running around, chasing paper, I just think, fools! Misguided fools. I've had all that paper. I've done lots of things, you know. You see, the thing is, even as a young person, I had a level of wisdom which said to me, look, I ain't going to be putting all this money in a bigger house and a bigger house and a bigger house uh, so I can live in one fucking room and have 20 others, you know, fucking vacant so all other people may look at me, oh, he's successful. No, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually be successful instead of people thinking I am and I'm going to travel the world and I'm going to see the world and I'm going to experience the world. All different sorts of animals all over the world. Uh, one year, uh, some of you will know, I climbed Mount Kilimanjaro and that was a seven day hike and um, I thought I was going to die on that climb by the way. It was one of the uh, most um, pinnacle experiences of my life. Uh, and after that then I went and spent um, uh, another six days on the uh, Okavango Delta. Uh, which was um, it's the, the biggest national park in uh, uh, Tanzania. That's where Mount Kilimanjaro is. Then, when I was out with all the lions and the, the fucking wildebeest and rhinos and all that, and I was sleeping in tents with the howls of hyenas rummaging all the rubbish and everything like that, the guides told us, African guides, people, in Tanzania, the guides told us, Get in your tent before dark and don't fucking come out. And if you want to piss, piss into a fucking bowl or a bucket, right? But don't get be coming out because there's lions and fucking hyenas and stuff and you're going to be a little fucking snack for them. So as I'm lying in the tent, I'm listening to the... These, you know, insane sounds that the hyenas make. And uh, they're ripping the fucking bins to pieces, getting all the old chicken bones out and stuff like that. And uh, then in the morning, I opened the fucking tent up, you know, at dawn, and I peeped out, and there was a fucking zebra just grazing on the grass in front of my tent. And, you know, this is it. And what I didn't see when I was there, absolutely beautiful. Then, when uh, I'd finished that, I took a small aircraft over to uh, Zanzibar, which is uh, owned by Tanzania, Tanzania, and uh, I went to see the burial place of the heart of um, David Livingstone. You know the great Dr. David Livingstone, I presume? Yes. Well, you see, for many years he tasked himself to find the source of the Nile. And so he was travelling extensively through Africa and many years in Tanzania. And he ultimately died in Tanzania. Um, but you see, because he died so far out in the bush, his team of African tribesmen, you know, the ones that carried all this, the equipment and everything, um, uh, decided that, well, they can't carry the body back because the body's going to be rotting and everything like that. So they cut his heart out and they wrapped his heart up in leaves and stuff and dried it out. And then they took that back uh, to Zanzibar. Uh, and Zanzibar was uh, British colonial and it's got beautiful British old hotels and you know all the streets and everything it's wonderful and on the other side are fantastic beaches so I went to spend a whole week on just like completely empty beaches with all bamboo uh, you know uh, cabins um, you know very inexpensive uh, so I went to see um, the burial place of uh, David Livingstone's uh, heart and it was like um, a wall about four feet six high built out of stone uh, with a cast iron uh, gate on it and uh, it was about uh, 12 feet long by about eight feet wide and um, it had a plaque on the wall here was buried the heart of David, the explorer Dr. 
to David El Nuto. And uh, within this wall, uh, it was about uh, 12 inches filled with rubbish, crisp paper, packets, uh, um, uh, coke cans and uh, water bottles and everything like that. Because um, the African people, um, modern African people, had no idea who uh, the great Dr. David Livingstone was. Um, they respected his grave, not and just used it for a fucking rubbish tip. And uh, the sign of the times, you know, uh, sad, sad reflection. You would have thought somebody in the local uh, area, being British, because there's still, you know, I would think a high British presence around there. And the hotels that I used to stay in, uh, of course, all the old furniture was old style British, you know, made out of mahogany and oak and, you know, with all the banisters carved and deep, rich oak and, you know, absolutely fantastic. And, um, you know, uh, the, the, the uh, porters would stand on the door where he, wearing a suit and you know, calling you sir every time you came in and out and um, treating you like, you know, uh, a British gentleman. And um, I used to call the guys that assisted me boss. I'd say, thank you, boss. No, no, sir. No, sir. No, sir. I'm not your boss. You're my boss. You're my boss, sir. And I went, well, you know, I'm not really your boss. Oh, yes, sir, you are. You're my boss. I went, well, okay, if you want me to be. You know, but... You're just a guy doing a job. I know you're fucking boss. I'm just a traveller, you know. A different mentality. But he was still stuck in the same colonial mentality. Yeah. And when I went to Gambia... I went to Gambia. Wow, that was really bizarre. Because um, when I was in Gambia, I went to one beach region. I went to lots of places, travelling all around. But one beach uh, was completely riddled with human bones because the coast is being eroded there and uh, what happened is that the coast had eroded um, about a mile into the land and the land sand and it, it eroded uh, the vast majority of uh, substantial graveyard from all the colonial people you know uh, big weeks that, that went there um, you know town mayors and all that sort of thing and uh, you could find uh, skulls, um, you know, sticking out of the sand and all different sorts of, um, you know, uh, human bones. And um, so uh, I said to the guide, because I used to hire people just to take me all around, local people, you know. And I said, uh, uh, I want to go back to that beach because that skull I found, I want to take it. OK, boss, OK, boss, no problem at all. And I said to him, I said, I'm only joking. Oh, why, boss? And I said, well, because if I try to take that back to my country, a human skull in, in my bag, there's going to be a problem. He didn't understand. He had no concept of that. And uh, can you imagine going through the x-ray and then there's a human skull in there? Well, you know, big investigation. But uh, you can do all different sorts of things like that in these third world countries. You really can. With a little money, you can see and do anything. And uh, so, yeah, I started out this, um, this video with people that just, they don't have any awareness of what they've got. They've got no idea what they've got. They've got a soul and a spirit and they've got the gift of life in this beautiful whatever it is. You know, hologram or simulation, dream, illusion, whatever it is, but it's wonderful. And if we look after the vessel that we've been blessed with, then it, it will pay dividends and it will afford us uh, the energy to be able to explore massively more than we would be able to if we disrespect this. If we disrespect this, every single week, month and year that we disrespect this, we are limiting the, the experience potential that we can have in this dimension. Do you hear where I'm coming from, people? I get it, there's lots of you that are obese and you're not fit and you're ill and this, that and the other and you're not even my age. Well, ask yourselves why, people, why? Because you've, you, you've done wrong stuff. 
you, you've lived wrong lives. You, you, you've not capitalised on what your cosmic gift has been. Your cosmic gift has been this miracle and you've disrespected it. And so now you're suffering. And so, you know, you've got your just desserts. Granted, some people, they will get illnesses uh, attributed to inheritance. And so that's very unfortunate, isn't it? But obesity and uh, infirmity and weakness, well, that's due to laziness. And so, this is why I walk this path, or I cycle this path, five, six days a week, every fucking week of my life, I'm doing it. And I'm gonna do it, probably till the day I die. Because I respect this human experience because I know that this is God. I know that this is God. And I know that these eyes are God's eyes. And I know that that which is looking out of it is God also. So, I am God. Now, if any of you have a problem with that, well, that's your issue, not mine. And these silly billy religious people, God's up in the sky, God's Jesus, blasphemy, we're, we're nasty, horrible, sinful creatures, we're evil, and the only true one loving thing is Jesus. Oh, what sick individuals. <laughs> See what a face like this when she's walking by. Ah. Yes, yes people, can you feel the life? You can feel the life, can't you? You can see the life, can't you? Yes, why is that? Because I've, I've tapped into it, I've tapped into it people. So the first video I made was like, you know, don't be misguided in a state of delusion by thinking that your thoughts are um, a real honest projection of what you are experiencing. They are in that your thoughts create your reality, but the reality that you're experiencing by your thoughts isn't the be-all and the end because you can change the way you think and experience a whole myriad of different lives. You see, like the life I have lived, global exploration and enjoying all the fruits of life and um, just doing wonderful things. On one occasion I was in the jungles in Guatemala and I had a little monkey uh, swinging around my body playing with my dreadlocks. I had dreadlocks at that time as well. So this little monkey uh, it's only about um, 18 inches high body wise uh, so I don't know whether it's a young one or just a different breed a brown one it was but it come and it jumped up to me and it grabbed hold of um, my dreads and it was, it was swinging around my body like uh, on a carousel swapping its hands hanging on to <laughs> he thought that looks like a fucking good game I'll go and play on that what a wonderful experience then of course, you know, I've, I've fondled crocodiles, wild fucking crocodiles, people. Um, I've, I've felt the awesome power of kangaroos when, when you're feeding them and you try to take the food away from them and they grab you with their powerful claws and you don't want to fuck with them, I'm telling you. Some of these kangaroos, they stand seven feet tall and when they jump up and kick you with their fucking hind, hind legs, they can rip a man's chest open been known to do that and um, so being in caves full of bats and um, uh, all different sorts of animals from all over the world um, you know I've been living among and, and sharing uh, their worlds swimming with sharks and turtles and you know manta rays and all different sorts of stuff scuba diving on the barrier reef uh, oh my goodness I could go on and on and on and on but you know you can imagine traveling to 45 countries and many of the countries many times that's an enormous amount of travel people and um, so 
the vitality of life, taking life by the horns and living it, people. <sighs> and so, don't allow your mind to be corrupted, people. And if it is corrupted, then start setting your stall out to uh, dismantle the corruption. And you do that, of course, by changing your diet and starting to exercise and starting to read certain things and meditation and um, spiritual practice and uh, entheogens and um, you know walks in nature and a great zest for life and everything like that and uh, so there's much that you can do uh, but for those of you that you know you're very sedentary and you just couch potatoes and all that well I suppose the next best thing is watching the Awake and Bray's videos, isn't it? Hey, Let's hear it for the Awake and Bray. Round of applause. The sound of one hand clapping. You know the deal, people. Catch you later.